started sort of like a, a very a meeting with my agent and then a woman named Brenda Bowen who works uh, at my agent's agency and was formerly a publisher at HarperCollins. And we started knocking around this idea of just that there, that there should be a boyfriend app. And that's what everybody wants. Well, people want other important things too, like, you know, peace and things like that. But they also <laughs> want boyfriends. And um, we thought, well, that would be great. And then also the idea that what if there was this company kind of controlling how we were thinking and how we were, you know, getting our information and stuff like that. So, um, and we kind of, the three of us thought, okay, this could really work, this could really work. And then kind of pl plotted a little from there. And then they said, okay, go ahead and write it. And then, I, you know, I wrote it. And then that's how it yeah. Oh my goodness, it's, it's hard to remember actually how Pretty Little Liars fell into place. Um, again, it was it was talking back and forth with some editors that I knew, and um, you know, it was kind of like, well, well, Sarah, you know, what kind of what kind of series would you like to write? And I always liked mysteries and thrillers, and I tell people, and they always think I'm weird, but I always loved the idea of stalkers. <laughs> um, text messaging was becoming really popular at the time because this was 2005 um, and it, it was sort of like well you know maybe we can use the texting um, and this anonymous stalker sort of thing and I also was really interested in um, people who go missing you know those, those people that you see on the on the milk carton um, you know what happens to them and what's their story and and actually the beginning of the first Pretty Little Liars is sort of like remember that girl in the milk carton and kind of she actually has a weird twisted past um, and future. But um, so it kind of came from there. It was, it was never like one spark, one moment. It was a lot of work. So if you could be any one character in your books, who would it be and what would be the first thing you would do? Oh my goodness. Car questions. <laughs> I want to say that I would be Allie. Um, only because those poor other girls, that my main characters get so tormented. So, um, it, but Allie is, a, is also a twisted person, and it'd be interesting to get into her mind even more than So would you go torment your friends? No, I don't think I would torment my, I don't know what I would do. I would probably, you know, amend, make amends or something. Like, what are you, I don't know. Um, I just think she would be a really interesting character. Well, I wrote a book called Smart Girls Get What They Want before this, and um, it was about three girls who, you know, feel like they're missing out on life, and they're, even though they've got everything going for them in high school. And I think I would like to go back and be one of those girls only because I know now that things are going to work out so much better than they have any idea that way things are going to work out. Um, I guess that either, either any one of them, those three. Um, I would be my main character, Audrey, has this fashion blogger cousin named Lindsay in the book, and she just, like, every time she would come on the page, I would smile, and I would just be like, oh, good, here she is, and so I think I would be her. She's just, like, a very, a fun sense of life, and I feel like I'd go around her, they feel good. <laughs> so, is there a book that you've read recently that you kind of thought, man, I wish I had read this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would be like four times yesterday. I was in the Barnes and Noble before the event started, and I was like, "Why did I come up with this? I did this book is so good. Why can't I write like this girl?" There's this book called Life After Life that's out right now. I think I'm saying it right. It's an adult book. Okay, that's on my list of things to read. It's so good. Like I started reading it. Like you know, sometimes you read someone's book and you're like, "That's Kate I could Atkinson. maybe, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes you're like, "I could maybe do something like that. Like maybe I could if I work really hard." Enough. I read this. Girl, I started the first like four pages. I was like, "I will never write this well. This woman's amazing." Yeah, she is. She's yeah. really something else. Oh my. Well, you know, look, we were talking about this last night. I have kind of really violent taste in literature, so I am. Um, <laughs> You know, I want to be <laughs> Jillian Flynn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to use. I was going to use Jillian Flynn. I thought that book was amazing. I thought oh, all, of all of books are amazing. All of her books and my daughter, I have a 22-year-old daughter who is just as twisted as I am. And I used to be a, a newspaper reporter and cover, you know, crimes and stuff like that. And she's just, talk about stalkers. I mean, she's she's obsessed with, with all, she keeps like a running list of murder stories and things in her brain. So I did introduce her to Jillian Flynn. And, you know, it's a really in interesting discussion worth having. With why teenage girls like reading about this? Yeah. Is there some way of controlling it? Some way of conquering it? Or you know, you know, feeding Sarah's? Um, <laughs> 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 Jillian Flynn was my pick too. Actually, that I mean that's who. That's that's. I've read a lot um, in the last year. Probably less than I have with having a child. And I have in recent in other years. But um, 
I kind of read the Gillian Flynn novels back to back, and I just was like, these. She's she's not only the stories are not only like totally twisted and weird, but she she does amazing things with language, mm -hmm. and as a writer, you just can't help but be really impressed with you know with that. I think. Oh. Although I've given her to people, and some people say, mm -hmm. yeah. And then you just have to become friends with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, like, what? That's amazing. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. Like, how did you? How could you be into this? Like, the gold cards. I know. I feel that's right. Like, like, I know, like, right? So, is there um, a moment that you can think of uh, a most memorable fan or experience moment in your career so far? Fan oriented. Fan or just in general. Like I'm trying to make a broader now. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some bad fan experiences. Uh, I'd actually, goodness. well, I did actually have a stalker. I had the most nerdy stalker in the world. <laughs> I wrote a, I wrote a mystery series that was based in my hometown of Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and you know, people there sometimes don't get out much. Is there any, are there any Bethlehem people here? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't mean but to I know where it is. Yeah. It's yeah. It's it's where it is. Is. And and this guy. Was, he wrote me an email back in the day and said, you know, you have her facing the wrong way on the bridge. And that was the first time that I, you know, I didn't really understand that you have to answer those and say, thank you so much for pointing that out to me. So he went to my, he went, he went to three signings that I had in, back in Bethlehem. He'd show up the entire time with like, you know, a compass and a map. And he'd say, see, she's supposed to be, if she, there's no way the sun could have set <laughs> And that was, that's my creepy fam. I'm sure you have people have wonderful fan moments, but I, I have creepy fan moments. I never had a stalker. Well, it wasn't a stalker, it was like a kind of GPS stalker. <laughs> A fact checker. A fact checker. A fact checker. And he was fact like, I'd see him at like he'd wait at the end of the room. Oh, Bob, he's here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was coming. How about you? That's funny. My well, my favorite moment for this book, fan wise, was that my dad really liked it, and that I didn't expect it. It's like a YNL. Oh, I thought, cool. like, and I was like, this is. But it's very techy. It is yeah. very techy. Did you read it? Huh? I, oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like it? Yeah. <laughs> She was really smart. <laughs> <laughs> I found this bad boy hacker that I like befriended, and he like took me into the world of this hacking, which is crazy. Like speaking That's of awesome. stalker, murder mysteries, things that are crazy. I mean, crazy. And like, but he could explain it. You know, sometimes somebody explains something to you, and it's so complicated. But they are just so good at explaining it that he like he made me. I was just like, I this is. So I cool. completely understood it. Especially he just, since he's a hacker, you'd think that maybe he didn't explain it. Just yes. like, I just know, you know? That's right. Like, yeah. But because I have guys that help separately with app building because they're two different things, which I didn't realize. I thought it was well, everybody who knows computers knows computers. But some guys help with app building, and they were good too. But this hacking guy, like, changed my world. And then now I watch shows like, like a 24 type show, and I'm like, I think I know how to do that stuff. I, I'll be like, oh yeah, he's like installing a backdoor. Like, my husband's like, you don't even know what he's a printer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> really fun fan experiences have been like when um, old teachers of mine have come out. Like my fourth, I went to, um, I grew up in State College, which is in the middle of Pennsylvania, and um, my like fourth grade teacher came out, and maybe my fifth grade teacher too. Like it was really sweet, and she's just like, they both gave me cards, and you know, it's just like, we love you, you know, we always knew you were. Which I think they didn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was a creative kid, but I mean, you probably have that. The teachers um, like that. Like that. Yeah, yeah, but like, that. but um, and then my um, my high school again, like, because I went to a different, because I lived in Philadelphia then. Um, you know, a lot of my I had a book event, and it was really when I was starting out, like maybe it was pretty little. I was like four or something, um, and uh, a bunch of teachers from my high school came, and they were like the only people at the event. Um, and I was just like, oh my god, I know you! And I, and it, it was, it's just, that, that's been, all of the fan experiences are, are wonderful, but that was more particularly touching. Um, and then I have lots of fun show stories as well. Do tell. Yeah. Um, well, the, fu the funniest, like the, the thing that I can't believe that I did was, I was on the show. Um, 
I was on episode seven, which was which was kind of a joke in itself. I I knew that I met the creator and I was like, put me on the show. I'd never Wait, what acted. Were you in the show? I was a substitute teacher. I was Miss I was Miss okay. Shepherd. I was Ez, I was Ezra's substitute. Um, so then she said, well, actually, yes, we will put you on the show. So we're going to fly you here. We're going to give you a script. We have like a call time. We'll pick you up. And I was like, oh my god, wait a minute. I'd like never been in a play. I'd never been into the play. <laughs> I'd never, um, you know, been on camera for anything. So they did pick me up. They took me down to the set, which is, you know, in LA. It was in the Warner, Brother, Warner Brothers lot. Um, I had a trailer. I went to the wardrobe. I went to makeup. I, you know, and then I was obviously on the set, and it was so totally surreal, and I was so nervous. I was shaking. It was really cold in there, too. It was in the sound stage, and it was freezing, but I had this scene with Aria, with Lucy Hale, who plays Aria, and it was like episode seven, so the show hadn't even aired yet. This was like a few weeks before the show aired, um, even for the first time, so nobody knew who these girls were or anything like that, and... Um, it was just really fun, but but she said afterwards, she's like, you were so nervous. <laughs> she was like, I was like, oh no, I was terrible. But And they cut out like half of my lines probably because I was so nervous. And so overacting, I was like, oh, I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> yeah, I, was so, I didn't know what to do. I had no idea. So, um, yeah, I was, <laughs> but it was really fun. And then I was really embarrassed when it came on. I was like, oh my God, there I am. Don't look. Don't look. And my mom was like, look, she'd like replayed it a million times. Because so, I think I was... I was visiting her at the time or something like that. So how often do you get to go? How often do you go to the set? Can you go whenever Kind of once a year. I could probably go whenever I want, but it's in LA and I don't live anywhere near there. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I suppose I could go like every day if I wanted, but I don't know, maybe they wouldn't want me to go every day. I'd be like, hey, it's me again. Um, I have a comment. Um, I think you're doing that scene wrong. Um, no, I, like once a year. I've gone once a year. So I'm kind of due for another. How was the, have you been to the Lion Game, I'm assuming? I have not been to the Lion Game. The Lion Game shoots in um, Austin, I want to say. And I, if they, if they resume, well, yeah, but if, they, yeah, that would be, <laughs> but that would be fun. I've never been to Austin. So, um, if they resume shooting, I will probably.